Hey there, Fletch from All Things Overlanding here. Today, I'm gonna to be talking about a little bit different topic than I've talked about before. I'm gonna be talking about going on camping slash overlanding trips with pets. So I actually took my first sort of solo myself and Bella, my dog, uh, overlanding trip about three or four weeks ago now. It was quite the experience. So I learned a lot, I saw a lot of the pros, I saw a lot of the cons. So again, I kind of wanted to talk through that now that I've done it. Um, some of you may have a lot of experience, so if so, and you listen to this or you watch this on YouTube, post up in the comments and give me some more tips and pointers. Um, if you've never done it before and you're kind of nervous about it, again, I hope that this episode will give you at least a little bit of sort of peace of mind and tell you a little bit what to expect when you take a dog with you. Now, if you have a cat or a gerbil or a ferret or something else, I can't speak to that, but I will be talking about taking a dog today. So again, I'm gonna talk through that stuff today. If that's something that you're interested in, then hopefully this will be helpful for you. Um, but so without further ado, let's get into talking about taking your dog on your camping slash overlanding trips. All right, everybody, so as I mentioned in the intro, today I'm talking about taking your dog with you on camping and overlanding trips. Um, my dog, I'll put a picture up here of her, her name's Bella. She's freaking adorable. I love her more than life itself. Um, I have fought having a dog for years and years and years. I, I literally had one when I was growing up and all I remember is that that dog ate all my Ninja Turtles, right? So I had a bunch of armless and legless Ninja Turtle toys. And so I did not have a great experience with dogs when I was younger, so I kind of swore them off. Like once our dog passed away when I was probably, I don't know, 11 or 12, uh, my mom just was like, we're getting some cats. And we had a couple cats and then another cat showed up and then one cat died and then we got another cat. And so we always had like one to three cats at any given time. And you know, they're kind of self-sufficient and they have a litter box and you don't have to walk them and they can kind of come and go in and out as they please. And you don't have to take care of them. So like for a while I was like very pro cat, very anti-dog and uh, Finally, we actually we actually inherited a dog when my wife's uh, mom passed away and that dog was cool Like she was okay, but she was older kind of set in her ways She only lived for a couple of years that we had her and then she passed away Well, so then after that we had also lost our cats that we had for like 16 years So there was a lot of loss that happened all at once and then my wife was like, you know what for the kids sake for my sake I need another pet look at this puppy look at this puppy for like months, right? Like hey check out this puppy Hey, look at how cute this puppy is and I'm like, you know what? wife if you want to get a dog get a dog that's fine and and so i kind of gave her the go ahead and of course within like a week or two we were going down south a couple hours to meet uh someone that had boarded this dog to pick up this dog that ended up being the dog we have now which is bella um and again i fought it and when we came home i'm like yeah it's cute it's cute but you guys are feeding it you guys are taking it for walks you're doing all this stuff right and then lo and behold, within like the first couple weeks, the dog was laying next to me in bed and the dog was kind of following me around and the dog was listening to my commands and, and I kind of became the sort of alpha or dominant force in Bella's life, I guess. And since then, that's kind of been how it goes. She kind of like plays with the kids, views them as toys, chases them around, you know, will kind of take their socks and stuff, um, does not listen to the wife at all. Uh, but then like when I say something she stops and she listens and she will go get the toy or she will come inside or she'll stop barking or whatever that is. So I've kind of developed this relationship now where I absolutely adore this dog. She goes upstairs, my wife goes to bed earlier than me at night. I'll stop all these stories in a second, I promise. She goes to bed, my wife does earlier than me by a couple hours every night and the dog will go upstairs with her if I take her upstairs, but then she will lay in her crate until I come to bed. And then when I come to bed, she gets up into bed, gets under the covers and cuddles up to me and then lays with me. So she's my dog, right? So I, so I wanna take her camping, right? I'm a camper slash overlander. I wanna take this dog on trips, but I've never really done it because there's considerations, right? Like there's a lot of things you have to think about when you're taking a pet or something dependent on you on a trip at least with kids they can talk they can carry their own gear that kind of thing with a pet it's like you got to bring a bunch of extra stuff you have to be very concerned about them it kind of changes a lot of things about your trip so again I'm gonna just kind of run through kind of the pros of taking a pet I'm gonna run through the cons of taking a pet I'm gonna kind of give you my final feedback as someone who is very reticent very like hesitant to take a pet on trips what my kind of final thoughts are and whether I will do it again right so let's start with pros of taking a pet um, one for me, again, I, as I mentioned, I'm primarily a solo overlander. So I like to go by myself a lot. 
part of that is because I have to shoot videos and things like that. I do gear reviews out when I'm camping. I, it's almost like a work trip for me. So it's weird when other people come along and I'm like, hold on a second, I gotta go talk about this chair that I got or whatever, right? And they're all sitting there staring at me. So I go by myself a lot, but the dog doesn't care if I'm shooting a video, right? So like there is some camaraderie there. There is some, you know, some joy that comes with that, obviously. Pets are adorable. They're a lot of fun. Um, so having the dog with me was a lot of fun just to kind of see her reactions and see her, you know, freaking out about birds in the trees or, you know, animals on the ground running around everywhere, bugs trying to chase bugs and things like that. I think she had a good time. Um, so that's a pro, definitely camaraderie, right? Um, another pro is, you know, and my dog is tiny. I don't think she's going to protect me from anything necessarily, but she has a pretty mean little growl when she wants to, you know, try and show a squirrel or a chipmunk that she's the boss. So like, I think if a raccoon or a coyote or something like that, you know, approached the camp at night, that she would at least provide some level of protection via growling for that kind of thing. So again, not something I'm terribly worried about, but especially if you have a bigger dog, right? If you have some sort of a more ferocious beast than my 20 pound uh, Chihuahua slash Black Lab slash Whippet slash Bulldog, um, <clears throat> then there may be some real, you know, real, uh, weight behind that claim that they could provide you with some protection, right? And then in addition to that too, right? Like, it's just fun. It's just fun. It's just fun to have a dog. It's fun to pet them. It's fun to see them, you know, again, enjoy life, get out and do something a little bit different, get to see new things, get to travel to new places. You know, some dogs stick their heads out the window. Mine, not a big lover of car rides. So that's another fun part. And that'll come out in cons here in a second. But, you know, for a lot of dogs, they enjoy riding in the car. They like looking out the window. They like meeting new people. That was one of the things that my dog loved when I went on this trip. It was actually with a bunch of other people and several of them had dogs. So there was like, you know, I'll put a video up here. You know, she's the little the little dog in the, in the foray, but they're all kind of just like wrestling around and growling at each other and having a great time. Um, so again, super fun to, to get to take your dog out places with you for the camaraderie and then also for their enjoyment, which is a lot of fun. So kind of diving into cons, I'm going to keep this one a little bit shorter because there's only so much you can say about taking a pet, right? But so cons of taking the pet is, you know, again, in my case, she does not love the car. She is a very nervous rider. So I actually have to bring this thing called a Fido Rido, which is sort of like an elevated platform with like a bed built into it and some straps, like leashes basically. So you can kind of attach her harness to it so she doesn't try and get off the seat because what she tries to do is come over and lay in my lap with her head jammed down in between, you know, my hip and the, the door so that she can, you know, protect herself, keep herself safe. So when you kind of strap her down to that, she'll just kind of lay down and she'll go to sleep, um, which is great. But you know, there's, if your dog is a nervous car rider, if your dog is not big on trips, or if your dog's wild and crazy and kind of jumping all over and causing havoc while you're trying to drive, that could be a, a downside for sure. Um, another one is just that it, it really is going to change your trip, right? Like you're going to have to kind of think about stops and think about breaks and things like that in conjunction with when your pet needs to eat or needs to get a drink or needs to go to the bathroom, that kind of thing. So you do have to like change up the way you do things, right? You can't, I couldn't take a 10 hour trip and just go 10 hours straight. Like I can when I'm by myself. I'm going to have to stop. I'm going to have to feed her lunch. I'm going to have to get her water every once in a while. I'm going to have to let her out to go to the bathroom. I'm going to have to bring stuff to clean up the poop if she goes to the bathroom somewhere, right? Like there's all kinds of considerations and additional stuff you have to bring. And that's kind of the next thing that I wanted to get into is like stuff you have to bring. So I have this big, huge Fido Rido. I basically can't have someone in my passenger seat because I have to have the dog up there. Um, I got to bring trash bags for poop. I got to bring food. I got to bring water. I got to bring bowls. I got to bring her leash. Uh, a lot of times I'll bring this big rope thing that you can string between two trees that has sort of like a pulley with a cam on it that you can attach her leash to so she can run. It's like a dog run, it's a portable dog run. So you can hook it up between two trees at camp so she doesn't have to be like tied to your bumper or something so she can actually run around. So there's just a lot of stuff that you have to bring with you. In addition to just the stuff that you have to bring, there's also, you know, it changes your whole entire trip. I sleep in a rooftop tent with the dog. That means I got to carry her up into the tent. If I get down and she freaks out and, and chews through my screen in my tent, that's a big expensive repair if I can even repair it. Or I have to buy a whole new, you know, canvas interior part for my tent. So there's a lot of stuff to consider there. If you do, you know, happen to indulge in some adult beverages and you have to get down to go to the bathroom in the middle of the night, you may have to put that harness back on that dog, put the leash back on the dog and take the dog to the bathroom with you, right? If you're in a national park, national forest, someplace with an actual outhouse, that sort of thing, it's gross, it's dirty in there. You kind of have to bring them and carry them or tie them up to the back of the bathroom door. And there's, it's a lot of stuff, right? And then that dirty dog is coming back into your tent. That's another thing too. Dogs are outside creatures and they don't wear shoes unless you put shoes on them, I guess. Um, but so like, you know, the dog immediately, when we took our first stop, it was in a gravel parking lot at a gas station. 
This dog is rolling around, being submissive, looking at the other dogs, and she is covered in white gravel dust. And then she's back in my truck and she's jumping around and she's getting dust everywhere. She's in my tent. She's on my sleeping bag. She's, you know, getting dirt and dust and sticks and all kinds of things all over the place. So if you're kind of a neat freak, bringing an animal is going to complicate that a little bit, right? So there are definitely some cons to bringing them as well. Overall, though, my kind of final thoughts on the whole camping slash overlanding with a pet... I think that I will do it sparingly. I, you know, I, I think that it's a great thing. And I know a ton of people that take their pets on every single trip. And again, if you have some a pet that's really, really good in the car, or you have a pet that's really, really chill and likes to just hang out in the, in the tent or whatever, then you're probably fine. My dog is a two-year-old, basically puppy still. Uh, she's very attached to me, right? She's not been on a lot of trips. She's nervous in the car. So like, there's a lot of stuff. Like uh, that last trip that I took, she was up at six o'clock in the morning standing on me. She had her front paws up on my chest because she was trying to look out of the tent to see birds that were chirping. So like that's how I woke up and then she never went back to sleep. Her ears were just up and she's just like, what is happening? Where there are so many animals. How can I get to these animals? How can I eat these animals? So like that is that is a thing. But it was it was a lot of fun. So there were a lot of pros to it. I enjoyed it. I got some great pictures, some great videos. Again, I think she had a great time. So I enjoyed that. I want to give her more of that. So maybe like two or three times a year, like preferably when the weather is kind of cooler and not really hot out. I don't want it to be miserable for her. Um, like in the fall, I may take her once or twice or three times, but probably I won't take her on every trip. I probably go on 15 to 20 trips a year. And like we're going to the core event here in September, four days in a row. I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to mess with it. I can't go into a restroom. I can't go into a restaurant. I, you know, it limits what you can do so much because this animal is dependent on you and there's so much more stuff you have to pack to bring them, right? So in that case, I'm not going to bring her. But on a quick overnighter to like my local national forest with just me, sure, I'll take her if the weather's good, right? Um, so anyways, that's kind of my final thoughts is, yes, I think there's a lot of value in it. I think it's a lot of fun. Probably won't be like an every type of trip for me, maybe a few times a year. Um, but so what do you think? Like you folks that bring pets on every trip, post up in the comments down below on YouTube. Let me know, like, you know, do you love it or how do you deal with it? Or is it, am I being a, a whiny baby, right? Feel free to tell me. I, I'm not saying anything's wrong with it. I enjoy it. I just, I'm so used to being by myself that it, it is more work to take this dog. Um, but so let me know your thoughts, right? Post up in the comments down below. Let me know what you guys think. Let me know if you've got any tips. Like I said, I'd love to hear from you on that. Um, also in the description down below are going to be links to Facebook, Instagram, the podcast if you're on YouTube, YouTube if you're on the podcast. There is a Patreon page. And actually, one of the last episodes that I did was with some of my Patreon folks. So if you want to be on one of our live episodes, definitely check out that link to the Patreon down below. Love to have you in the group. We've got a 24-7 Discord where we all kind of chat about stuff, builds that we're doing, questions that we've got. Um, and then, you know, what we're doing once a month, basically, like hop on a video call and chat about a topic. And then that'll become one of my episodes. So if you want to be part of that, Definitely check that out down in the description as well. Um, and then last but not least, there is the Newbie Overlanders Facebook group. If you're on Facebook and you're looking for a group that's not going to beat you up for asking questions about overlanding, that's going to be supportive and stuff, that's the one for you. Definitely click through that and join that group. Um, but that's pretty much it. So again, thank you guys for watching. Thanks for listening. Uh, we'll see you next week and uh, look forward to talking to you in the comments. Take care.